Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about diet and nutrition. I've been getting a lot of requests to talk about what my thoughts are and tomorrow's thoughts on diet and nutrition these days. And it is, what are we in February, the end of February, the 19th, 2022. So one of the main tenets that we are finding about nutrition is that the majority of people that tell you what you should be eating are wrong. So if you're hearing diet gurus or bulletproof executives telling you what you should or shouldn't eat or what people can't be healthy eating, that is a bunch of ridiculousness. What you want to do instead is to listen to yourself so you and what we have learned our opinion and i'll do that at the very end why don't i save that to the very end so one of the things that ends up happening in diets and i was listening to someone else talk about this as well it's a really good point is people get used to eating things that they like so for instance ice cream and chicken nuggets so when you go onto a keto diet and from the keto diet, you want keto ice cream, and then you want keto chicken nuggets, and you're basically eating the same diet as before. You're just doing it under a different name. That's not necessarily the best thing to do. So we've also heard people say, you know, you can't be healthy eating a vegan diet. Well, you know, I don't agree with that. I'm not a vegan, but I think people can be healthy on any diet if they do the thing that we'll talk about at the very end of this discussion. So sit back and relax. We're going to have a nutritional discussion. It's been a long time since I've talked about nutrition. And one of the main things that we need to talk about when we talk about nutrition is what to eat. So one of the things that I'll tell you about is what we're currently eating, because sometimes people want to know what our current diet is. It's the middle of winter here in Wisconsin where it's quite cold. So I and Tamara will be eating more of a cold weather diet during this time. So what does that even mean? You know, a cold weather diet used to mean for us that we would be eating keto for all the winter because carbohydrates are not available in our region at this time of year. And there's a philosophy that says when it's winter, you eat a ketogenic diet, there's no carbohydrates available, and your body is tuned into the light frequencies that are in your environment. And those light frequencies say that you cannot grow carbohydrates. And if you were to eat some carbohydrates, let's say fruit or banana from Peru in the middle of winter in Wisconsin, the electrons that the light embedded in that fruit are going to confuse the mitochondria in your body and cause sort of a circadian mismatch. So what that is really saying is like your mitochondria run electrons through them. They do not run fat, carbs, or protein through your mitochondria. It's actually um, electrons that flow through the mitochondria to make energy for your body. Or at least that's what people think. You know, they think it makes ATP, which that's what we learned in school. And then that ATP is the energy currency of the cell. That's what people tell you. That's probably incorrect uh, because of what we know about proteins unfolding and folding. The mammalian battery, where batteries can do work in the body uh, via energy, which happens via sunlight by charge separating water uh, through uh, exclusion zone water that we learned about from Gerald Pollack. So what we do know is that most of science is complete bullshit. So that is something that you really need to think about and take home and maybe meditate on because think about every nutritional study, every biochemical study that's ever been done. So biochemistry says we make ATP and ATP must be the energy of the cell. Well, nowadays we're learning that what ATP can do is zip and unzip proteins, uh, which is quite different than what they taught you in school previously, which means everything you learned about the body and biochemistry must potentially be questioned and, and could be incorrect. Furthermore, we know that light runs many of the processes in the body, and that's never talked about in school, but we know that that's true now, and we know from the thousands of papers on blue light, there are, I, I would say, at least two or three, maybe more thousand papers on 
the frequencies of light, specifically blue light, how it affects melatonin, how that affects your reproductive system, your metabolism, the hormones that you produce when, given the time of year, given the light that passes through your eye, all of that is connected. So when you run a nutritional study or a biochemical study and you do not control for light, you do not control for stress or the mental activity happening in somebody's brain, then those studies are all complete trash. And you can prove that just by take you and a friend of yours and let's just say you both go on the same diet at the same time, you eat the same number of calories and the exact same foods. Do you honestly think that you're both going to have the same experience? You're both gonna lose the same amount of weight or gain the same amount of weight or have the same feeling or be hungry at the same times or get enough sleep as the other person, the same amount of sleep. Honestly, all of that is something you can't control for and all of that affects the way your body utilizes, absorbs calories from food. Okay, so with that said, don't listen to the nutritional gurus, don't listen to the, the scientific studies because what we have come to know is that all of those are wrong and that's why red meat's good for you, now red meat is bad for you, now this other thing is good for you, now these people can't survive on a vegan diet like they did for the last 10,000 years, suddenly it's not working. So you have to question any and all of the studies and not take for certain or for truth experts, so-called experts, telling you that they read the studies and therefore they know what food is best for you or themselves even. That is not how you determine the diet that works for you. And I don't even think, what I've come to think, what we've come to, to talk about is we don't even do, we don't do diets anymore. That's something that's completely gone out the window. There are two things that we do right now that I will tell you at the end, and you're gonna have to do some research on those. Um, and I think they're gonna be a little controversial as well. But those two things mean that we don't diet just like ancient man never went on a diet, never ate a diet. They ate food and they lived their lives and everything worked for them because of the things we're gonna talk about at the end. Okay, so honestly, normally I'd be eating a ketogenic hibernation type diet and that's because carbohydrates don't grow in this region at this time of year. Uh, but this year I did something a little different. I figured that ancient man, especially in this area and for my background, which so we live in Wisconsin, which is Northern climate. My background is Native American for a portion of it. And they would have lived off the land in this particular area. And there is lots of wild rice available, which is something that can be stored and it's not even eaten right away. And it's typically harvested toward the end of the summer, early fall, late summer, and could be stored and eaten all year. So why would we say that we can only eat fats? You can never eat any carbohydrates in the winter. There are carbohydrates in a northern climate that would have been available, not in huge quantities, but in quantities that would have been available throughout the entire winter, like maple syrup, honey, birch syrup, wild rice, and in a European climate, depending on where you were, potentially things like oats or wheat. And so this year I changed my diet, we changed what we are eating from purely ketogenic in the winter to now adding some carbohydrates. So we are eating some soaked and sprouted, very important, soaked and sprouted oatmeal uh, with fats in it and some nuts and then a little bit of jam for a little bit of added flavor. So again, preserves still would have been available in some way, shape or form in my opinion. That doesn't mean that you're getting fruits from Peru and eating them in a northern climate. You're getting northern climate storable foods that were grown and processed. So processed like uh, scooping honey out of the honeycomb and getting the boiling down the, the water from the maple tree, the sap from the maple tree, maple tree to make maple syrup. Taking grains that were grown in a northern climate and our climate that have been stored here and eating those. So that is definitely what we're doing. We also, for the first time for me in 15 years, started making sourdough bread again. So bought a 50 pound bag of wheat berries, organic wheat berries, 
from a northern climate, of course. And then we fresh grind those. We use a sourdough starter, no commercial yeast. So no store-bought yeast whatsoever, not even to make the starter. The starter was made with 100% wild yeast. We only use, so that, that bag of wheat berries cost $30. That was a 50 pound bag of wheat berries. That's gonna make, I don't know, over 100, 200 loaves of bread. And that means that for 30 bucks, I am getting a lot of homemade bread with no additives whatsoever because the only ingredients in that bread are fresh ground wheat, water, and salt. Literally, there is nothing else. I use the starter, and guess what the starter is made from? Wheat and water, and that's it. The wild yeasts that are already on the outside of that wheat are and in our air are what make the starter. So we're adding nothing from the store except those wheat berries. So of course, uh, started doing that, not eating a ton of oatmeal and bread, but we're eating some of that as we break our fast, in addition to some protein and vegetables for dinner. And then we're doing a smoothie during the day. So again, right now we're doing uh, two meals a day. So they call that TMAD or TMAD, two meals a day. Usually breaking the fast between 10.30 if we're really hungry uh, to two o'clock in the afternoon. So sometime between 10.30 and two, we eat our first meal. And that's typically that oatmeal with nuts, and fat and maybe a piece of sourdough bread if we had some freshly made or not. And then followed by a few hours later, a smoothie. So the smoothie is gonna have some vegetables in it. It may or may not have some protein in it. And we've actually been putting in a little bit of uh, lemon. So some fresh lemon into there uh, for some flavor. And that is what we have prior to dinner. Dinner has been very early in the winter. We try to eat before sundown and therefore give our time, ourselves the most time to digest. I still believe that your body is not designed to digest food in the dark. So eat before dark if at all possible, which is what we do. And that you would go on your own intuition to see if that's right for you, to see how you feel eating before dark and eating well after dark right before bed. See it's kind of how you feel. And then dinner, of course, what I mentioned, the protein, we have been moving more and more toward fish and shellfish and things like that away from the red meats and pork. That's not to say we don't eat those. We have lots of friends that are local farmers where we buy some pigs. Uh, well, we bought three pigs last year between a few of us and we process them ourselves, and we all put some meat in the freezer and then we have friends that were farming cows. So we did get some cow to put in the freezer, some beef, and we still eat that. It's very local. We know the people that grew it. We know how it was raised. And we are transitioning to less and less of that as we eat more and more fish and shellfish. And that is just, again, based on what I'm gonna tell you at the end of this, we have also transitioned to not adding any salt uh, to our dishes. So obviously there's a little bit of salt in the sourdough bread, which is important uh, to help with that baking process, but we do not salt our food. We don't salt it when we cook it and we don't salt it at the end. And we've kind of eliminated all salts and one of the reasons for that is there's this theory that rock salt and even sea salt is not an organic version of the mineral. Um, well, sodium is really a metal. So like an organic version of that, it's, it's something that goes into your body and it can move about throughout the blood, but it's not something that your body wants to use as readily as organic minerals that come from plants. So the plants take in salts and minerals from the soil and they convert them into a more usable form for us when we eat those plants. Potentially when we eat the animals, that would happen as well. And adding excess salt, even though we've heard there's like all these salt trading places throughout the European and Asian world, that may not be true in the United States of the American Indians. They may not have had any use for salt and are a use case for not needing any salt in your diet that is added salt from like the salt shaker that you get plenty of it from the foods that you eat and so that's something we're exploring this year by not adding salt and when we go out to eat or eat at someone else's house we absolutely notice the salt that's in the food uh, because of the thing i'm going to tell you at the end okay so 
that's kind of our main diet is two meals a day, uh, which includes you know a, a meal between 10.30 and 2, a smoothie around 3, and dinner around 4 or 5. So that is how it is. We're eating less food overall than ever before. Uh, based on some of the practices that we're doing now, we are drinking almost exclusively distilled water. So there's lots of controversy on that. I am not going to tell you what you need to drink. I'm just telling you what it is that we're drinking. And we're, we have a very complicated process of distilling our own reverse osmosis water. This so comes out of the, the tap to the reverse well. It actually comes out of the tap to a, a whole house carbon filter that filters out uh, contaminants like organohalogens and pesticides and herbicides and VOCs and sediment. It does not filter out fluoride. It does filter out chlorine. So then that get, goes into our shower and everywhere. It's the whole house filter. And then it goes from there to a reverse osmosis filter just for our drinking water under our sink. And that filters out the fluoride and any additional compounds that are in there. And it gives it about a total dissolved solids of like six parts per million of solids that are some minerals that are still in there. And then from there, we put it in the distiller, which gets rid of all the dissolved solids. It's back to pure water. If you were using tap water for that, you would still get some of the chlorine, you would still get some of the VOCs that volatilize off with the water, and then you'd have to filter that out. So we do, even though using the reverse osmosis, we take our water from the distiller and we put it into a big Berkey, so it goes through additional filtration through the Berkey just to drive off any additional VOCs uh, or chemicals or chlorine that could possibly still be there. Uh, there won't be any fluoride at this point at all, and it'll come out to be a zero dissolved solids when we get it to the end. So we're kind of drinking this pure distilled water. So tomorrow likes to say it's not still, it's dis, not still. And that means that it's full of life and it can give more life to the body and the cells. And that the theory that distilled water will pull and leach uh, minerals from your body in a harmful way, we think is untrue. And that's why we're experimenting. And that is because what we're told is it leaches these minerals from the body. And my understanding from what I've observed and what I've read is that is true, that it will leach minerals from your body. And the majority of what it leaches from the body are the inorganic, kind of what they call rock minerals that are not available to the body and they build up causing problems in the body. Some people claim that they are what can block the arteries or deposit on your teeth uh, or deposit in other places. I don't know if that's correct, but that's the theory of why the distilled water, which pulls some things out of the body, preferentially pulls those inorganic minerals out, and then you replace them with beneficial minerals from fruits and vegetables. So that's the water that we're drinking right now, is the distilled water. We went through our diet at the moment. Our diet will change when it comes to spring and we get fresh vegetables. Our diet will change again when we get to summer and we get fresh fruits. We'll be eating more vegetarian in the summer, not vegetarian, but more vegetarian, meaning we'll still eat some animal products, but we will largely eat the foraged food off of our own lawn, as well as our fruit and nut trees that are all over our property, as well as foraged food we can get from the wild, including mushrooms. We're going to do as much of that as possible this year, as well as what we plant in our garden. And we will minimally purchase things from the store during the summer and we will eat far less meats during the summer. I personally am, have given up dairy for the last couple months. I started incorporating it again into my diet the last four, three to four weeks and I will be removing it again from my diet. So I just think most cultures that avoid dairy are healthier. Me personally, I do get a rash when I eat dairy and I was able to cure that uh, through one of these techniques I'll tell you about at the end. However, if I eat too much dairy, then it starts to come back, although now I know how to get rid of it. I actually had it for 16 years and I tried everything to get rid of it other than giving up kombucha, wine, any kind of yeast and bacteria type beverage or food and cheese and dairy. That would get rid of it and it's really hard when you eat out or eat at friends' houses to completely give up all of those things. So it would always be with me at some level and I was able to completely reverse it and eliminate it. And then I started eating a lot of dairy the last three weeks, came back, um, not probably about one-tenth of what it was before. But now I immediately know how to get rid of it and solve that problem, which is great. Uh, one of the things I'll be doing is giving up dairy again, 
probably permanently or at least for the majority of what I eat unless I'm at a friend's house and they've got some very amazing cheese. I might just have to try it as long as it's raw cheese. Okay, what my current philosophy is, let's get into this. And you're seeing, so on my screen, I'm going through this. This is one of my talks on blue light and the reason why you would wear sunglasses indoors and at night. Now, basically, we talked about the diet gurus and they're, you know, like, like Dave at Bulletproof Executive, or I'm not sure what his company's name is now. I know they kind of separated between the nutrition and the podcasting and other things, but they, you know, they talk about the studies. It's all based on the studies. You have to know the science behind the studies. And Dave had talked about, oh, he went on to the Dr. Oz show and they grilled him for an hour um, before he could meet Dr. Oz about how well he knew the studies and whether there was science backing up some of the claims that he was making. And that's all well and good, but if you base everything on the studies, you kind of miss the forest for the trees. And you, you miss quite a bit, as we talked about, you miss the effect of light, stress, emotion, sleep, your chemical makeup of your body, which I am guaranteeing is more unique than the person uh, next to you in a different way, right? So you're unique to you, they are unique to them, and in your unique way, the diet that works for you is not gonna be the same diet as the other person. So I don't care what studies you reviewed, you've seen, you've put together, they are gonna be rewritten next year and the year after. And that's why there have been something like one to 500 diet books written every year and people are still getting fatter and sicker. And that's because they're trying to follow the science and the science has turned into scientism where we break everything down to these minuscule parts and we study just one tiny component we think we know everything about the whole and that is the biggest bunch of bs that you can put try ever to put together and we're realizing that i mean some of us at least hopefully are starting to see through that fact that these diets are not working for people and maybe in the short term they work but i think the average person over the age of 40 is on something like seven different pharmaceuticals and that most of them are to mitigate the side effects of the first pharmaceutical they had to go on to, to mitigate a symptom that is being suppressed by the pharmaceutical rather than getting to the root cause of the actual thing that's going on in the body. So we try to move away from the dogma. We try to do uh, the first thing that I'll talk about, which is intuitive eating, listening to your own inner tuning fork and vibrationally attuning to what it is you eat. That's a lot, uh, and what it means is you pay closer attention to what's going on in your body. You start to understand what various foods do to your emotions, to the, your physicality, to your sleep, and to your energy levels. And then once you start really paying attention to that, you will start adopting an eating style and the types of foods that support high energy, that support great sleep, that support you feeling really good in your physical body, being able to do the things you wanna do, work out when you wanna work out, and you start to vibrationally attune yourself to life-giving foods. So often what I'm finding is that I don't want to eat dead, processed food. The vibration, the health is, and the vitality is not there, and my body, can attune and can feel that when it gets into my body based on my energy levels, my sleep, and my mood, all of it. And so as you tune into yourself, you will vibrationally attuned to the right diet for you. And the other thing you might want to think about doing, and this is what we do, is, is thinking about putting intentions into what you drink and what you eat. So we all know the Emoto work on the, the, the water crystals that when you put intention into them, they form different crystal and structures. And there's some newer water work where you can put physical objects into the water for only a second or two and take it out and flash freeze that water in a thin dish. And then you can see a hologram of that object that you removed from the water in the water that's frozen, in the frozen ice. So there's memory in water and your intention changes the structure and potentially 
the energetics of the water. So that means all the food you're eating has water in it. The fresher the food, the more water. And when you tune into that and program that water with love and peace and joy and abundance, you are eating that and making it part of your body and your cells. And I want to eat living food as much as possible to make that food a part of my living vibrational, energetic, and physical body. So that's one of the things that we've been doing is a lot more vibrational alignment with what we eat. And uh, the second thing that we do, and I'm going to give you the name of it, and I want you to look it up and you to do your own personal research on this. But after doing this, if you eat salty foods, you're not going to enjoy doing this process I'm going to talk about because you will have to take those salty foods back into your body and you will definitely notice how much salt you are eating that your body does not need and needs to get rid of. If you're eating a heavy meat diet, uh, this practice is going to affect you in some bitterness that you're gonna get as feedback, some heaviness and some saltiness. And if you eat a living diet, the more living diet you eat, the, the better this will do for you and you'll have a much more pleasant experience with this practice should you want to try it. The reason that we tried this practice, and I'll tell you what it is at the very end because I do want you to look it up and, and stay with me here. The reason we're doing this is we, well, tomorrow really read 10 or 11 books on this practice. We heard three or four podcasts. All of a sudden people that are celebrities and Oh, actors, actresses, models, uh, health influencers, medical doctors, friends of ours. This is just bubbling up everywhere from almost everybody that we talk to or meet with, which is really incredible because I heard about it four to six years ago, never thought about it again, never heard about it before then, never heard about it again after. And now it's popping up everywhere. And I think this is part of the sovereignty movement as many more of us begin to tune into new energetics on the earth. Remember, we are electrical beings. We are spiritual beings. We absorb energy from everywhere and our body reads that energy. Light is energy. Food is energy. Our bodies are attuned to the energetics. And as the earth energetics change, remember we're bombarding ourselves now with 5 and 6G, 5 and 6G from the cell towers are energetics packed with information inside of them. That's the, the data that goes wirelessly to your phones and your computers. There's all this data in there. Your computer wouldn't be able to read the photos and the emails and all those things. Well, those are flowing through our bodies. At the same time, I believe that we're getting new energetics from the sun or the cosmos or the earth or the constellations. So all these things are changing some of the information that we are receiving and upgrading us. And because of that, these practices that have been hidden for so long are suddenly coming to light. And I'm sure many of you are seeing that and feeling that. I know we are. And this particular practice, I really believe, is self-medicine. It is medicine that you can use at home for so many things. And it is a practice that you can use during fasting. It's a practice that you can use for survival, and it's a practice that gives you more sovereignty and control over your own health. And that is huge in this crazy time that we're in. So while we're doing that practice, we're doing the two meals a day, and we're kind of doing this practice up until we eat our first meal. So between 1030 and two in the afternoon, we would be practicing this. And it is called Shivambu, S-H-I, Shiv. V-A-M-B-U, so Shiv Ambu, you can look that up. And before you decide anything, I highly recommend you read a few books. And I can tell you what those books are in the comments. Those books made me change from thinking this was something I would never even consider to wanting to try it and then continuing to try it and now deepening the practice and exploring more and finding huge benefit to the practice. And so many other people that we know now that are doing this are finding a huge benefit as well. And it's an ancient practice that's been written about 5,000 years ago with instructions from India, of course. 
and just now uh, obviously coming to light to so many people. So I know tomorrow we'll be talking more about that. She does have a podcast on it uh, that she recorded, uh, one already that's out there. Likely she will be starting her own podcast in the future around some of these things. So please stay tuned and ask her for what you want to hear on her upcoming podcasts. So check out that practice and do your own research. See how it vibrationally resonates with you. It did not resonate with me until I did my research. I had to do research uh, from Andrew Norton Weber, from Dr. Phillips, from a number of other medical doctors that are the extremely early pioneers in this from the early 1900s. Uh, one of the books is called Water of Life. The other one that's kind of a crazy biohacker read, and it's written all in one paragraph with no um, grammatical anything being done. So the writing is, I mean, the writing is readable and, and good, but the formatting is so bad, I almost put it down after the first two pages. But I forced myself to read 10 pages, and then I read the whole book, and it was actually really interesting. It's called OMAD, so that's one meal a day. Omad Oren looping and uh, he's a little extreme but his book was great and I read you know that there's um, your own perfect medicine is another book and there's there's stacks I mean there's hundreds I, I had no idea there's hundreds of these books uh, as you start looking them up you'll know what we're talking about some people already know the term Shibambu some people are completely turned off by it but as biohackers we explore we do the work which is the research, we see how it vibrationally attunes into our energy field, and then we experiment on ourselves, and we decide before we talk about it, before we make any, uh, any decisions, we experiment and decide whether it's something that we want to do, whether it works for us, and whether it's something we vibrationally attune to at the very end of it. And I encourage you all to look into what it is, and that is a huge part of our health strategy in these times. Everyone needs to have a health strategy uh, because we, we honestly do not know what the future holds for so many of us. And as we navigate these strange new times, we're going to need to build community. We're going to need to build more sovereignty. You are going to stand up and become an adult or you will be told what to do for the rest of your life. I am going to stand up and become an adult. I'm not going to continue walking down the path of having someone else tell me what's best for me. I encourage all of you to build your community locally, not on the internet. Your global internet friends are not gonna be the ones that will save you when you need local help. The more local and tribal we become in our own communities, the better off we are all going to be. The more sovereign we will be, it is time for us to take back our sovereignty, to grow up and, and as Crow 777 says, to take our diapers off and start learning something about ourselves, about the world that we actually live in, and how to take care of ourselves and others in this time. 